Hi guys, and welcome back to Chai TV. I'm Nicholas Bauer, and the um, topic of the day, sculpin. So, this is a feather game changer type of sculpin, uh, which I'm fishing a lot for perch, and also for brown trout. This is one of my favorite patterns at the moment. It's quite simple to tie, uh, it's not a lot of materials, but it's really doing the job well. What I like with this pattern is that it's uh, very simple to keep the bottom, it doesn't snag at all. And this small, or this is a medium dragon tail actually, in copper, is just really, really, really good. And super durable and fun to tie. So what we're gonna start with is, this is the uh, Sculpin Helmets from Fishkull. If you compare these to a lot of the Chinese copies they are, is that these are actually, if you can see these, they're much heavier on the bottom that they are on the top side. Most of these Chinese copies are very similar on the top, on the bottom, so they're not, they're not tracking the bottom as well. So uh, really focus on buying the good stuff because it's gonna catch, help you catch much more fish. Uh, what we're going to do now is going to uh, put two eyes on this with some uh, UV glue or UV resin. So this is the cool stuff from Finland, Gulf. This is a fluorescent orange. So you just wanna give it a little bit good shake to get that color pigment nice and evenly spread in the, in the bottle. We're gonna make one small drop here. Oops, not, oh yeah, one small. So, so you can see it like that. Let it flow out a little bit. And we're just going to cure it with a UV lamp. When that's done, we're gonna go to the next side. We're gonna do the same here, just one drop. Yeah, come on now. There we go. Cure it. So you can see you have a really cool eyes already. Fluorescent. But we're just going to um, give them that extra touch to it. So we're just going to make a nice black dot as a pupil. Uh, when I do that, I usually take a small piece of paper here. See if I can find one. <coughs> And then I press out some black resin on a piece of paper because it's, it's hard to get that really small piece of black that you want as a pupil. So you just put your dubbing needle in that and we just make a small black pupil, as you can see, and then you cure it. The black is good to cure a few seconds longer than the other colors because it's such a color such a solid color. So you really want that UV lamp really to go through it. Then we take a small drop and make the eye on the other one. Just gonna cure that a few seconds. You have that, that head with those two eyes looking really cool. Super simple way to do it and it's really fast. and Actually very, very durable too and get those two fluorescent dots in the head. And of course you can play around with different colors here. You can do whatever you want with this, but it's a really, really cool stuff. So go and try it out. Awesome stuff. So this whole fly is made from um, shanks. I put them on the table here. So this fly is basically um, just built up basically on shanks. So we have a fast attach in the back where we can attach the tail so we can change the tail in different versions. If you, if you wear out of them, if you catch a lot of perch or a lot of brown trout on them, they might break, so you wanna just be able to change it. Or if you wanna do another color, for example. Um, so we're gonna have a fast attach in the back. We're gonna attach that to the 10 millimeter shank. We're gonna, sec next, next piece is gonna be a 50 millimeter shank. And the last one is gonna be a 20 millimeter shank. And then we're gonna run a 20 millimeter shank that we're going to tie this to the hook. So we have a simple attachment. So that's how the fly is basically gonna look. We're gonna start with the, uh, the shortest one, the 10 millimeter shank. We're gonna take that fast attach, we're gonna pull it into that so it's secured in the back. We're gonna attach this to the vise. Of course, we're going to adjust the vise so we can get it in. Something like that. So it's nice and secured. I'm going to put one drop of super glue here. Once again, I'm tying with a 
the NEMA thread. This is the power thread from TechStream. This is a 50 denier, so it's a little bit thinner than I normally use for pike. Uh, but I like it. It's really strong. And these shanks, you want to be able to put a little bit of tension to the thread so you actually can close them so they don't open. So we attach the thread. We keep this fast attach in the back so we can, of course, you can see this. We can attach the tail already here. Uh, so you can see how it's going to look. So this is going to be the tail here. Uh, we want those first hackle to be a little bit longer so it's actually covering the fast attach so it doesn't look like the tail is behind the fly. You should have the feathers kind of covering that so it looks like it's incorporated in the fly. So this is the awesome stuff from Whiting here. This is a soft hackle shikabu from the breed Brahma hen. The feathers are quite uh, short feathers but the fibers are quite long and uh, the texture is really, really nice. So it's like a model, like a grizzly type of um, texture to it. And what they've actually created is they've created feathers that are very, very soft, quite far down. So a lot of these hen feathers usually become, the stem becomes quite thick and quite hard to wrap uh, when they are this size. But these are really, really soft, so you can actually work it all the way down to where it becomes like a marabou. And um, so it's a really, really cool feather. This is what we're going to run. We're going to run two colors. So we're going to run like a brownish type of. There's so many different color variations of this. So this one is tied with a, a natural color and orange. Uh, but I'm going to do like a light brown or a brown color and then natural just to make a little bit uh, less bright pattern uh, because it's just a super cool uh, goby or uh, uh, sculpin pattern. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. The first one is going to be a little bit longer because I wanted to cover this. But after that, you want to be able to taper the feathers. So you go from smaller feathers up to longer and longer ones. So you get that right taper to the fly. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of pull those fibers away from the tip like that. So we have the tip. We're going to tie that in, having it facing towards the right uh, in an angle to you. Tie it down quite hard so it doesn't rip when you start hackling forward. So then you take your fingers and you kind of double the hackle so you get most of the hackles on the other side, opposite side. So because when you want to wrap this forward, you want that those fibers to fold evenly on both sides like that. And then I'm using a really small uh, hackle plier from Petitjean. This is actually made for CDC feathers, but it's super good for this because you want to attach this to the hackle stem. So you just push in the hackle stem here and you pull this uh, kind of a spring here uh, up. And it's super simple to work and it's also a little bit jointed, so it's very easy to hackle. So kind of push those fibers to one side and then you just want to wrap this forward here uh, in nice, even. Uh, hackle turns. Make sure that you fold these feathers or these fibers back the whole time. And then we're going to go all the way to the front here. And then we're just going to tie this off. Make a few turns. Tie it off again. Cut that little stem off. Then we're just going to make sure that we make a few thread wraps here so it doesn't break. And you can see when this is going to get wet, it's going to cover this and make a nice taper to it. There we go. I should have a brown marker here somewhere. There it is. So just so I just I just hate when you have some white threads showing somewhere. So what I'm going to do is just going to col color this last 10 centimeters of thread here with the brown marker. I'm going to put some super glue on the thread where I col colored it. And then I'm just going to kind of end the fly by doing that. Make one knot so it's secured. And then that piece, that last piece is done. So now we're going to basically work ourselves towards the, other, the opposite way, uh, just by doing different colors and different shank size. So this is the first one, the 10 millimeter. 
So when we're still in the vise, we take the next one, it's a 15 millimeter. Sometimes you need to open this a little bit so you can get him into it. We get that in there, take it out from the vise. And then we're gonna attach it again, put the second shank like that. If you want, get this tail out of the way, you can just put a clamp to it. So you wanna put this as far out in the vise as possible because you really want to be able to close this oval uh, part of the shanks, so you make it as round as possible so they don't tangle. So once again, put a drop of super glue here so we can close the shank. Kind of work with your thread along the shank. Try to work up where it's oval. Um, so we try to get that at round, as round as possible. Once again, a drop of glue so those thread wraps doesn't fall down. So we kind of create that still round feeling to it. So now we're going to go with a brown, uh, with a gray one first. So we're going to have this model. So it's going to be brown, gray, brown, gray, carrying forward. Now we're going to go with a slightly shorter one. Um, so it's a gray one. Then we're going to try to find one that where the fibers are just almost the same size or just slightly longer. Oh, that's shorter. Can't use that one. So you want to have that taper building up. So a good one, so we can use that one. Keep them for the next fly. So we do the same here again. Take that marabou looking fibers away. Kind of make that feather ready for to be tied in. So we have that little point there in the front. So you want to have it looking like this, so we can tie it in. We do the same with the other one. Take all the fuss away. Taper this end, so it's just ready to tie in. Of course, you can be very thorough here, but you don't need to. So it's done, a little bit longer than the previous one. So we tie this in again, in the end here. Tie it forward, cut that existing material off. So we fold the fibers to the left again, attach the yours, whatever hack applier you want to do, and then we start hackling this forward again. So basically I want to do two hackles here. So I want to do a gray, and then after that I want to do a brown one. So I would like to have this hackle covering all the way to where there's double material in the shank. So I can kind of get that closure where that is. I actually managed to do that right now. Then make a few turns, so, and then I can Make one drop of super glue and then I can attach the brown one just in front of that double material on the shank. It's going to be a little bit more simple to, to wrap the hackle. Do it again, tie it in. So now I'm on single strand shank here. Cut the existing material off. Fold the material back before you put in the um, your hackle plier, otherwise it's a little bit easy to pull off the hackle. And then we're just gonna start doing this again here. So try to get a little bit longer hackle the whole time here. So you get a nice taper to the fly. So we just make a nice end here, tie, tie it off twice so that hackle doesn't start wrapping up backwards. 
when you cut the thread off. I'm going to do the exact same thing again. Color the uh, thread brown. A little bit super glue on the thread. And then we're just going to finish that shank off. Make one turn. Cut the thread off. So that was the second one. As you can see, it's a little bit two-toned, looking really cool. Same here again. We're going to open this a little bit. You can use your nail usually. If you have weak nails, you can just use a, like a bobbin or something or a dubbing needle. Push it in. Take it away from the vise and then attach the shank again here. There we go. So this is the last shank we're going to run now. So now we're up on a 20 millimeter shank. And we put a drop of super glue. And we attach the thread again. Make sure you close this. Cut that thread off. Make sure you put a drop of super glue here. So you can get those thread wraps to go a little bit to the left. So you close this oval loop here. It's important with that super glue, otherwise the thread just start, has a tendency to, to go to slide back the whole time. So that little drop of super glue make that oval thing become around and it doesn't tangle as much. So we have done the small one here. We have done the second one. Now we're in the third one. So here we can actually run, usually we can run three hackles. So we're going to start with the gray one. We're going to go with the brown one and then the gray one again. If you want to start adding flash here, if you want a flashier pattern, you can actually, if you're looking like this one, I've actually added some flash already into the last one. But I want to keep this a little bit dull. So I'm only going to use some body material, um, which is called polar reflector flash, in the last part just to get a little bit flashy. Flashes kind of feeling to it. So we're just going to run three hackles again here. So we ended with the brown, so we're going to start with a gray. So now I'm going to start, I'm going to use two gray ones. So it's going to be slightly longer and the, the, the one in front here is going to be even longer like that. So I'm going to try to find two that are quite big ones, which these two are. So you see it's a little bit different in the size. And then we're going to have one brown one that are kind of in between those two. In fiber length, that one is perfect. So we're going to run it like that. So now we have the, you can see a little bit different here. It's hard to see if you don't do a really close up, but this one is slightly shorter in the fiber. This one is a little bit longer. And then this is going to be the one that we're going to have all the way in the front. So you get that taper to the, to the end here. Start with the gray one. Make sure we take all those fuss away. Let's just make it so much easier to handle. Prepare it. So you have that piece, just like we have the previous ones. It's going to be the first one. Second one. And the last one. So we start with the gray, exactly like we did in the previous one. But we're going to run three hackles this time. You can moist your finger a little bit if you want to get that hackle to fold, get those fibers to fold a little bit easier. Attach your anchor plier. Then we're just going to start wrapping this gently forward here. Trying to cover that shank and just try to end it where it becomes single strand of shank.
take that out. Oops. Take a few turns. So now we got brown, we got gray, so we're gonna go brown again. Tie that hackle in again, just like we've done a few times already. Make uh, one drop of super glue here, just so we have a strong base. Kind of expecting to catch between 50 to maybe 60 perch on a fly like this. So you want it to be very durable. And if you're starting to catch really big browns on them, uh, they can be quite uh, tough with the teeth. So that sop drop of super glue is actually really good. So attaching that echo plier again. Then working with that hackle forward again here. Slightly longer than the previous one. That's going to make this tail swim extremely well. And if you go into quite bad quality on hen feathers, uh, it's going to be very hard for you to wrap these because a hackle stem usually becomes too thick and you're not, you're not able to wrap it around the shank or a hook anymore. So, do that. Fold those fibers back. Make a few turns. So now you can see it's a little bit slightly tapered. Um, I'm just going to tie in the last one here. It's going to be a little bit longer than the previous one. Make sure that this is nice and tight here. Cut that mater existing material off. Drop a super glue once again. And we attach this. Of course, we fold the fibers back first. Go with your thread a little bit closer to the shank eye and then we just start hackling this. It's just the same way as you would build up a feather game changer uh, as a streamer or as a um, another sculpin or goby pattern. It's just I just want this to be a fly that's really fishing close to the bottom. So we make a nice ending of that, securing that hackle stem. Cutting that off. Making a few turns, securing the thread. And once again, coloring the thread. So now it's going to be a little bit different from here on. So. Super glue. Few turns and a secure knot. So now we have the tail here. It's uh, as you can see, it's a little bit tapered. It's longer and longer here. I should make this a little bit faster. So it has a taper going down. So it's actually going to swim really, really well. You can see it here when you. Actually, it's a little bit more visible here. Ah, too many fish on this fly. So you can see that it becomes longer and longer, the closer to the, the head you come. And this is going to make it swim really well. So when you put this on the bottom, it's actually really cool because the feathers, they just stand straight out. You don't really get this with, with synthetics. You get this with only with feathers, in my opinion. And it's just, you can drop it on the bottom, just make it jump a few times, like a goby or a sculpin, and then just drop it on the bottom, and the fish comes and picks them up from the bottom. Super cool. So, 10, 15, 20 millimeter shank. And then we're going to prepare the hook here. So, um, uh, of course, there are numerous hooks on the market. Uh, I prefer to tie on a partridge hook. This is the Attitude Streamer. Um, it's a 1-0. Uh, 
I tied them on one hose or two hose. Um, there are a whole bunch of sculpted hooks out there, but usually I think the bend they have on them are a little bit too much. I just want these hooks to be bended so it just comes up like this. If you tie them on a straight hook, the, the balance becomes a little bit bad, but if you tie them on too much bend, it, the, the, the point comes up like this. I just want them to lift slightly up like this. So what I do is I uh, use a flat nose plier. Um, try to go into where, the where it's a little bit thick here, and then you just gently push it up like this. So you don't want to do too much of a bend. You just want to have that, uh, hard to say, I'm not a really good in degrees, but you just want it to be bent slightly up like this. Because what it does, it makes it lift a little bit from the bottom, and it becomes a much better balance, and, and that sculpted head really stands on the bottom. So a simple way, and you don't have to buy all, uh, just a special hook for that purpose. And you will not increase uh, or decrease the strength of the hook by bending it this much. Of course, when you come up to a, like a 90 degree angle, then you're going to uh, severely damage the hook. By doing it like this, it's not a problem at all. So what we're going to do now is we're going to tie this shank uh, to the hook like that. So uh, instead of just using a double wire or something, we're just going to do exactly like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to first attach this. So now you have to start thinking a little bit kind of upside down because we have tied it like this, but it's going to be like that on the fly. So you have to think that this is going to be here. So we're going to need to push this through here and take this away from the vise, attach it to the vise again. And then we're just going to make one hackle on this shank before we put it into, uh, we attach it to the hook. So once again, drop a super glue. Attach the thread here, close that shank, try to work with the thread towards that loop so it becomes a little bit rounder. Take a drop of super glue there so the thread doesn't slide down too much. And then we're gonna run a brown hackle here. And now we wanna be much bigger in size. So now we wanna take one of those hackles that are really long, so it makes a big difference from, from the previous one. Well, not a big difference, but at least a difference, you know. Let's see if I can find one that is a big one. So we ended with a gray one, so I'm gonna start this with a brown one. So it's uh, slightly longer, as you can see. Take all the marabou stuff off. Once again, taper the feather. So we make it prepare so it's ready like that. Tie it in. Cut it off. Moisture your fingers a little bit if you need to. Fold those fibers to your left. And once again, we're gonna use that hackle plier. And we're just gonna gently hackle this forward, making sure that all the hackle fibers are folded backwards. So we try to once again go where the double wire ends. It's usually quite a good place for that. Whoops, hackle. Hey, come on. Gonna cut that off there, make a few turns, so secure that so it doesn't fall down. We're gonna make one knot there, because we're actually going to cut that off and attach this one to the hook here. So I'll drop a super glue so it doesn't come down. So now I have to remember that so this one here is going to be tied securely like this. So we're gonna put that on the table, just like it is. Nice and chunky here. Then I like to tie this 
tie it in the opposite way here first, so it becomes a little bit more visible what we're doing. Once again, drop a super glue so we secure the thread to the hook. So we're going to attach the thread, wrapping it backwards. And now we're going to attach this to the hook. Here, of course, you can do different ways. Um, I think it's quite easy to do it with the shank because it just becomes a very non-tangling uh, version and it also becomes fairly light. So we want to do it like this. Uh, the double that double material should just of the hang of the shank here, where it's where it's double, it should just be kind of leaning on the back of the hook bend. So something like this. Just gonna work backwards here so you can. Then I'm gonna release my finger so you can see how it looks. So, so I have that double material leaning right on the hook bend where it starts to make a slope, and and um, this is going to make it come from the from the belly here and straight out, and it just becomes a very simple way to attach the tail to the hook. So, go with the short short turns here. Try to go all the way up, and then just make that strong and nice. We, of course, we don't. We're not going to have any fish hanging onto this one, so it's not. Do, doesn't need to be super, super strong. Uh, but if you have a hook in the end here, you need to be very, very thorough with this. And now you just have to be uh, a little bit thorough. And then, of course, you know me, guys. A little super glue. Make it nice and strong. Then we're gonna work all the way back to the to the end here with the thread. And now we're going to so now we're on this point of the fly here. So now we're gonna attach some body material so we get a little bit flash into the body and also it becomes a little bit more voluminous. So this is um, polar reflector flash. It's a brown flashable. Um, if you make these in, in smaller sizes so with shorter uh, hackle fibers, you can always kind of cut this and taper it a little bit. But now the these fibers are almost the same length as the hackle, so we can run it the full length. Otherwise, you just push it up and you just cut it a little bit, so it has a nice taper to it. But um, big perch have a tendency to like big gobies or big sculpins, so it, you don't have to do it really. So, we're going to do it here. So we're running one hackle here. We're going to put some polar reflector flash. We're going to do a second hackle. And then we're going to do some polar reflector flash. And then we want to push the last hackle. We want this head to kind of push it back a little bit so it has a nice transit to the head. So basically, polar reflector flash, hackle, polar reflector flash. And then this head is going to push that last hackle. So you kind of basic, basically know how uh, it, the setup is going to be here. So, I'm gonna hackle this around here. It's good because it's a little bit tricky here, right? We're so far back on the hook, so it's nice to run a material like this so you don't have to work with a hackle. That's why I used to put the hackle onto the shank before I tie it in, just to get a really nice transit over here. So we do a few turns here. And what I want to do is I want to be able to get one hackle here before this double material here. So go a few turns back with the thread. I'm gonna tie this off, and make it nice and secure. Uh, we are going to make those fibers kind of fold back nicely. So now you can see we are kind of getting somewhere here. Um, the last one was brown, so we're gonna run a gray hackle here. Try to go big again now. Just a little bit longer one. Just as normal, take the marabou away. It's actually only in the last hackle. Uh, if you want, you can leave some of this marabou because it get a little bit more fluffy feeling to it. But it's up to you. 
we're gonna tie that in. Go with the thread a few wraps back. Secure it gentle to that hook guy there of the shank. We're gonna cut that material off. Moisture your fingers. We're in a very dry studio here, so they don't have really too much moisture on them. <laughs> Once again, I attach this one here. And we are going to hackle this forward. So we're gonna do quite tight turns here because I just wanna do, I wanna finish this right where that hook eye or shank eye ends here. So I'm gonna try to do it right like that. Once again, secure this by tying it off. Cut that away. Fold the fibers back. So we got a nice taper. As you can see, this polar reflector flash is actually building a little bit of volume to it, so it becomes um, a little bit more bulky, which you want. If you look to a goby or a sculpin, they have a quite narrow tail, but the body is really, really chunky or very wide, and that's what I want to create with this head. So once again, we just color this with a brown marker. Of course, you can use a gray marker here, but I don't think uh, anybody will see the difference. So, just fold those fibers back. Let's make a few turns there to secure this. And then I just go in front of this with the tread. So, because we're just going to attach the polar reflector flash here. So, so that's um, basically the tail done here. That's a quite fat one. Yes, nice taper to it, and now we're going to run a little bit polar reflector flash here again. Which one you pick up from the garbage pail here. And we are going to attach that. And here you want... You want to build up a lot of volume, and you kind of like want to basically overdress the pattern here in the front. Because when you push that head there, you want to have a little bit, little bit of material there that can help you uh, make a bulky and nice head. So I'm going to run a few turns of the polar reflector flash. This is brown, but they have a whole bunch of nice colors available, like a really nice olive brown and a tan, which are all very suitable for this. So as you can see now, I'm basically almost in the hook bend. So I'm going to, or the bend I put to the hook actually. So I'm going to tie this a few turns back. And now we can always play with the head here. So, okay, I'm gonna go here. So this space I have underneath here, which is like two to three millimeters, that's where I want to hackle because this should push those fibers back a little bit. But basically the only thing I need to do now is one hackle and then the fly is done. So, Make a few wraps there. Drop a super glue so we secure this. And then we're gonna take a nice long brown one. The biggest one you can find usually. Nice and big one. So here, if you want to, you can actually leave some of this little bit marabou-like hackles in the end here. But the problem is that sometimes when you come up to these fibers, the stem is quite thick, you know. So, but I'm trying, going to try to leave a few of these so you get a slightly softer action to, to the fibers in the front here. So we're going to run that. But on, on the head, I don't have that much space, so I'm not going to use the full length of the feather. I'm going to try to start around here so I get a few turns of that stiffer material and then work into where it becomes a little bit softer fibers. So once again, tie that in. Here you actually could wrap the feather both forward 
and then actually I like to wrap it backwards again here a little bit because we are going to tie, we're going to push this head up on top of this and it has a little bit, quite a big gap here which you want to fill um, as much as possible so it's there's not a bad thing to uh, fill that with uh, material and um, here you can actually do it by just folding the feathers back and forward a little bit. Folding these fibers back for the last time. Same with the hackle plier. Last time in here, folding those fibers back and just hackling this forward. And now we start to come into where the hackle stem is a little bit thicker. Actually, on the board line, too thick to wrap. So you have to be a little bit careful. But now you can see that these fibers are a little bit softer. So we go back with the thread. You have to be a little bit careful here when you lock it so you don't break the hackle stem. Secure it a few times. And then I usually tie this hackle stem forward. Like this. Kind of go on the other side and I just fold it backwards just to once again build a little bit more material here for the epoxy to grab when we push the head on. Of course you can you don't have to use do this you can just put a little bit of yarn or whatever whatever you have handy but uh, it's quite simple to do it like that. So so the last one there and now this head is going to be like this it's going to be pushed, pushing those fibers back. We have a really nice sculpting pattern. So, once again, we're gonna end this. We're just gonna make one knot there, so we have a nice and secure wrap for that. And then just gonna make a few thread wraps here to make a little bit more volume. Of course, you can use a, something similar here. Uh, like a antron yarn or something that's not that expensive as a Dyneema thread, but didn't bring that to the studio, so have to live with that. So uh, basically that's done. Clearing the table a little bit here. Um, and um, so now we're going to glue that head that we prepared previous here. Which just kind of vanished there. So, uh, I just want this to be kind of like you can see, you wanted to push those fibers back, but you also need to be s sure that you have the space here so you don't have this pushing back and then all of a sudden you can't get your tippet through here. Because I like to fish this with quite heavy tippet. In, in Sweden, we use millimeters or in Scandinavia, so basically like a 0 0.30 or from 28 to 33, depending on. Uh, what type of fish and if we have a lot of predators in there. So you want to be able to have that space so you can actually get your tippet through it. So that's the only thing you have to be careful now when you do this. Actually, I usually put a clamp like this so I don't get any epoxy into the feathers. So once again, gonna mix a little bit of epoxy here. Five minute epoxy. So some hardener, some resin. Eh, come on. Resin has a tendency to become ah a little bit hard here in Sweden because it's quite cold outside at the moment. Doesn't like to be in the in the car. Just gonna take a lighter and heat it up a little bit so it becomes easier to work with. Take your um, dubbing needle. And just make sure that that's made thoroughly. Well uh, mixed. And then what I like to do is I kind of like to put some epoxy onto the head here. You don't want need to focus too much on getting the epoxy 
uh, close to the hook eye because it has the tendency to get there anyway. So, and then uh, we kind of like coat the inside of this head. So we don't want to try to get too much of this in the center here. We just want to get it around it. So the epoxy, when this starts to dry, it just has a tendency to kind of make like a cement in there. So it's the hole is still open, but we got epoxy all around it. It's going to go like this. And then we're just gently going to push this over here. Try not to get any epoxy in the hook eye and try to make that as straight and level as possible. Gonna take the hook, those fibers away so we can get a nice nice position. You wanna be make sure that you don't have any epoxy here and you wanna be sure that the under lip of the scalpin head, you just wanna make sure when you push the hook through here and the hook eye, it, it can sometimes looks like it's perfect, but you see this lip that goes underneath here. So you want to be able to push the tippet through all the way here. So you, you need to look through the hook eye here when you position this, so you actually can get the tippet all the way down. So just make sure of that so you don't glue the head on and then there's just metal underneath. So I'm just gonna wait five minutes and then uh, we can take a look at the Colby slash sculpin here we just created. So uh, that was five minutes and um, this little guy is done now. We have a, a nice uh, sculpin slash uh, Gobi pattern here. Uh, it's gonna be even better when it's a little bit wet so you can see the taper perfect. But um, I like the thin profile in the, in, the, in the belly here so you can really drop it on the bottom. All the feathers starts just go like this as soon as you drop it in the water and, uh, and that tail is just really creating a lot of water pressure and also that flash, that perch and um, other uh, predators like trout really like to feed on. If you want to get the flash reduced a little bit, uh, I use a, like a skin wiggle tail instead, then it, it doesn't become such a flashy pattern, like a brown natural um, skin tail, but a really good pattern. You can tie it in so many different colors, uh, variations, styles, whatever you want to do. Uh, try it out. Um, and of course, as normal, if you want to win this pattern, leave a comment and within one week we're going to make a raffle and give this one away and uh, hope you catch a big fish on it. Because I'm not, because I have to give this one away. <laughs> Thanks for watching guys and follow us on uh, Instagram, Fly Dressing and Nicholas Power. Thanks for watching guys. Bye bye.